Last Supper, and we remember Good Friday when he was crucified, and then comes Easter, so uh, when we celebrate his resurrection. So all these seasons and events we we celebrate during different times of the year, and this is the season of Lent, and it's also a season when um, typically um, the church and we talk about the very early church in the first days they would prepare um, people would be received into the church family uh, on Easter morning when they would do baptisms so uh, it's uh, it's interesting and uh, this is not the time to do a plug for confirmation classes but we do those on Wednesday starting this week and we'll be talking about uh, 
some, some lessons regarding the life of our Lord and the life of the church. All right, so without further ado, let's uh, prepare our hearts and minds now for worship as we open our bulletins to page one and begin with the opening acclamation. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Worship now continues with our opening uh, song, uh, Kyrie Eleison. The mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, 
no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we prepare our hearts and minds for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority. For it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. To the glory of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, good morning again. Uh, our gospel uh, reading today is traditionally called the temptation of our Lord. It may be um, as uh, William Barclay once said, the most sacred section of all the Gospels. It may also be um, one of the most important sections of the Gospel readings. And um, for much of our sermon today, we will hear how this story is the most relevant of all the readings. Again, it was Charles Barclay who's, did I say William Barclay? <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, was it Charles Barclay? I believe so. Any Bible scholars here? Charles <laughs> now I'm confused. Barclay, let's just call him Barclay, okay? <laughs> Barclay, of course, was the one who's the Bible common, excuse me, he was the commentator, just so you know. A commentator, commentator. So that was, that was a little joke I didn't warn you about, okay? So, 
but he uh, he said that of all the to, of all the temptation story that uh, this was most sacred because um, it is an account that only Jesus Himself could have reported. I mean, in the in the wilderness, He was alone. So he was the only eyewitness. So what we know must have come first from his lips. One of the reasons this is such a sacred section of the readings. The importance of these readings has to do with the verb that indicates urgency in the original language, in the Greek. Um, as Mark described, the temptation story, he says that the Spirit immediately moved Jesus from his baptism in the Jordan into the wilderness of Judea. Uh, or, I believe his words, the Spirit immediately drove Jesus from his baptism. We always think of the Holy Spirit being gentle and, and uh, wooing us and calling us but in this case, we are told that the Holy Spirit uh, drove Jesus, pushed Jesus. Uh, and the word he used is ekbalo, like the word in the middle of it is ball, like a ball batted or a ball thrown. <laughs> so uh, in a sense, after Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit uh, threw him into the wilderness, <laughs> so to speak. He, uh, and, and Luke's account of it also uses a forcible word. He says ago, um, and I remember that because the word go, um, and it means gently but forcefully to move somebody along as when a bouncer places his arm uh, against somebody's back to suggest or to insist it's time to go. So in both of these accounts, we are told that this must be really important because the Holy Spirit, with great urgency, um, moved Jesus into the wilderness after his baptism and anointing. So, most sacred, most important, and what remains has to do with why this is so relevant uh, to us and to our own wilderness stories. Uh, today's sermon and its, uh, and its relevance centers on the first sentence in our gospel reading. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, remember the Holy Spirit descended upon him in his baptism. So after his baptism, he was still in the fullness of the Spirit. In the fullness of the Spirit, he returned from the Jordan, the Jordan River, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Excuse me, he was driven by the Spirit. He was uh, in, encouraged strongly by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. And of course, it's from this phrase that we get the subtitle of this section, the, uh, the temptation of Jesus. He was tempted by the devil. And also from this phrase, we get the, um, the key word of tempted. In the original language in Greek, the word for tempted had a different meaning, meaning than we usually think of today. Instead of meaning to be enticed or urged to do something you ought not do, or to be uh, attracted or influenced negatively, parasomenos, actually means to be tested or to be proven. As in the science of metallurgy, a metal to be proven, um, you may know this, means to be tested for its strength and its durability and its melting point. Um, often with, uh, tested with extreme uh, high heat and harsh uh, treatments to determine just how strong it is. It's also used as, a, as an idiom when we speak of somebody proving their metal, which means to have one's character 
and one's moral stamina tested and proven. In, in a sentence, we might say, these temptations of Jesus proved the metal of his character. So Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He was tested by the devil. He was proven to endure um, his exposure to the high heat and harsh treatment of the surroundings and of the devil himself in the wilderness. And of course, I'm sure you already figured that the word pyrosominos has the adjective pyro, which is heat or fire. Besides being the most sacred, and the, uh, these accounts are most uh, relevant to our wilderness experiences, our own experiences. And in the words of Hebrews 4, verse 15, regarding Jesus as our high priest in heaven, our high priest, uh, we find these words. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, for he is one who in every respect has been tested, excuse me, has been tempted and tested and proven. Just as we are tempted, tested and proven, yet he was without sin and in our case, we are not sinless. Um, we fail often. We, uh, we are proven unfaithful time and time again. Nevertheless, Jesus is the high priest who has walked through what we go through. And as scripture says, he sympathizes with our weaknesses. Uh, no matter how high the heat, no matter how harsh the conditions, he understands. So we can be confident because Jesus was tempted, because he was tested, because he was proven. Knowing that whatever situation we encounter, whatever we go through, he is at our side sympathetically to support us, to see us through and be with us on the other side of it. I often put it this way in hospice chaplaincy when I say to folks facing hard, hard uh, conditions, whatever you go through, he will get you through. And there will be a celebration on the other side. Among Jesus' specific temptations during these 40 days, the first one was to bake a loaf of bread with only one ingredient, a large rock. I think there's a chef show where, they, where you only get certain ingredients, and with those ingredients, you've got to bake something. Well, he only uh, gave Jesus a rock. And uh, actually, to be honest, that was part of God's creation. So, um, uh, really... Uh, he offered Jesus an opportunity to, to make something from what might otherwise be nothing. It was a temptation of being totally self-sufficient, using his superpowers to serve his own needs, um, to serve his own appetites. He passed that test. Secondly is the temptation of self-compromise, the second temptation to, uh, to, compromise, um, to compromise who he was, uh, to compromise his monotheistic faith in one God who is his heavenly Father and to also on the side bow before this creature of God called the devil. What I've done in sermons past is I would always say, who is the God of all things good? 
the God, the God the Father Almighty. And who is the God of all things evil? And they would say, the devil. And I would say, no, the devil is not a God, even though we may worship him, worship him as one. He is simply, simply a slithering creature. Um, but from this deal with the devil, Jesus would, uh, would get all worldly power, that of an autocratic potentate, like some we've known. <laughs> this is what would be Jesus's had he listened to the forked tongue of the devil. This was the temptation of self-compromise. Uh, also of self-empowerment apart from his constant reliance on the power of his Father in heaven. And then the third temptation involved a leap from a lofty pinnacle of the temple to demonstrate that he was impervious to any potential harm. Um, this may have been the worst of temptations, that of self-centered insulation from suffering. Had he succumbed to that temptation, he could not have carried out his mission, which was to suffer and to die for our sake. And such insulation always has uh, a companion demon. With insulation comes isolation. They go hand in hand. This may be the most relevant for all of us. When we face extreme conditions of loss and grief and pain and suffering, and we insulate sometimes by self-medicating. We insulate our hearts from any hurt. Again, social isolation always comes with emotional insulation. And this is the very opposite of Jesus' words. To daily take up our own, our own cross, which is to daily take up our own suffering and follow him. Uh, way back I had a cartoon I shared with you of Kitty Grace. I used this to teach about grief and about getting through the loss that, that pains us so much when it is significant especially and Kitty Grace my cartoon character um, has on her back a cross because uh, dealing with our loss and grief always means doing so with a cross to bear and sometimes that cross that pain uh, is picked up and carried on to take the kids to, to school or to go to work or to prepare meals um, or to listen and be attentive to somebody when our hurt wants all the attention itself. So this temptation of total um, self-sufficiency and insulation um, is a terrible um, temptation as we face it in our lives. Uh, theologian uh, and author and pastor Carlisle Barney says that there really is only one temptation when we think of self-sufficiency, self-compromise and self-insulation really the one temptation is to serve self instead of serving others. And Jesus said his followers, including present company, are first and foremost people who live and die for the sake of others. And as I have seen here so often, for the sake of one another. Uh, in the stage play, the Cotton Patch Gospel, one of my favorites. It's Jesus 
um, portrayed by a 20th century South Georgian farmer. And, uh, and the writer of this says, Jesus wasn't a carpenter, he was a farmer. Listen to all of his illustrations, you know? <laughs> he talks about growing stuff, right? And putting manure down and, and cultivating. So anyway, so Jesus in, in the stage play in South Georgia as a farmer, he, when he finishes all the temptations, uh, his 40-day mini-semester, he holds up his final exam and he says, I passed, I passed. <laughs> the tests that were, that was placed before him. And I imagine that if, if this final exam were on paper, the Heavenly Father would have written a note in red ink on it. It would be a quote from the prophet Isaiah. It would be the quote that Jesus read aloud immediately after his temptation. This is part of the story we left out by stopping the reading where we did. But after his temptation, he went into his hometown, to his home synagogue, and there he read from the prophet Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom to prisoners, to proclaim recovery of sight to blind people. In other words, he was announcing that his calling for which he was anointed is not that of promoting himself, but was that of providing for others, prospering others, and being present with others. Thanks be to God that this is who he is, and this is who we are. Our world is a wilderness, not just recently, but always. And our ministry in this world is to follow our Lord, take up our own crosses and sufferings and pains um, and minister to our backpack buddies and our global neighbors aboard nearby ships and our actual neighbors as we reach out to, to those who live near us. Here we celebrate the forgiveness of our sins because sometimes we fail. Not by just what we do, but by, by what we don't do. But we also celebrate our faith here because so often we do follow our Lord's example. And you are the proof of it. Amen. Standing together now, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed on page two in your bulletins. <coughs> We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us is for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Standing or sitting or kneeling, whatever your tradition, we now prepare our hearts and minds for the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Sandra, Seth, Dan, Nanita, Jonathan, Sarah, Inez, Diana, Greg, Charles Ramsey, Dee, Candace, Alexis, Dorothy, Charles Wisely, Debbie, Faye, Janice, Sheila, Logan, Mary, and Allison. And we pray for President Zelensky and for the people of Ukraine, the refugees who have been disrupted in their daily lives and had their homes destroyed, and also those who are resisting the invasion. Be with them, make your presence known, and be merciful, O Lord. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that, there, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, hear the prayers of thy people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most oh, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you, all God, the word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done, we have not loved you, our Lord. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, not with your For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. 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 Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Yeah.
Right in the way of announcements today, uh, the, the, our first announcement would have to do with what comes up beginning this Wednesday. Uh, beginning at 6 o'clock, uh, there, uh, there are confirmation classes, and um, that will be from 6 until 7, and we will be doing uh, confirmation classes every, um, every Wednesday during during March, all the remaining Wednesdays at six o'clock. And then at seven o'clock, uh, on some of those Wednesdays, we will have worship together. Uh, my favorite uh, style of worship, uh, the Taze worship, very contemplative and quiet with a whole lot of candles. Um, just what our busy lives need. That will be this Wednesday at 7 p.m. And um, somebody helped me, uh, since I didn't finish my homework, obviously. Do we, do we have food this Wednesday? No. No, we don't. Okay. So, eat something before you come. I may have some snacks. I may have some, or eat afterwards, you know. So 8 o'clock's not too late to eat. So, um, and I may have some, I will, I will commit to it eating. You know, I'll, we'll have some snacks anyway for our one-hour confirmation class. Um, so uh, Wednesdays in Lent, uh, today service this Wednesday, and today is Fish Basket uh, Sunday. And the Fish Basket, you put your cash or checks in the little what do you call that straw basket, and uh, this will be given to our to our um, Backpack Buddies ministry. So, that's that. What else do we have? I may have confessed too much last Sunday when I said that this is my least favorite part of the service, is giving announcements. So, I, I don't do it as well. But if you have an announcement, feel free. And if not, then let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice unto God.
recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank mm -hmm. you. Oh, 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. He said, my own peace I give to you. Not as the world gives a greeting, do I give to you peace. So let not your hearts be troubled, and neither be afraid. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and look upon you with his love for you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Ward, what is our uh, closing song? He is exalted. He is exalted.